Most people would agree that the golden age of fighting games happened during the 90s, kickstarted by the release of Street Fighter 2. It was revolutionary for the genre and is one of the most popular arcade games to this day. And of course, having a popular arcade game meant having its home console ports. This was always the case even with older arcade games in the 80s, but they were usually watered down ports that didn't really match the magic of the original arcade versions. Whoa, nice graphic! But arcade ports went up in quality with the release of more powerful consoles like the NES and the Sega Master System. And Street Fighter 2 would be released just in time to be ported to the even better Super Nintendo, and it was glorious. Sure, it wasn't exactly arcade perfect, but I mean just look at it. Come on, this looks amazingly close. It really felt like you had the arcade game at home. If you have a port as good as this, why settle for a regular controller? Bring the true arcade experience home, the all-new Arcade 6 for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. With super responsive joysticks and instantaneous fire buttons, you'll become a pro in no time. Order yours now! What are you waiting for? Huh. Let's see if any of those sticks could even come close to replicating their arcade counterparts, or if they were just shameless cash grabs. The Super Advantage from ASCIIWare is one of the most common arcade sticks for the Super Nintendo. Just gonna say it up front, I don't really like this one too much. The most obvious issue being the placement of the buttons. It's like they couldn't decide if they wanted to go with the Neo Geo style layout with the 4 buttons, or a Street Fighter style 6 button layout so they had the two woohoo together and produced this. It's not bad for things like beat em ups and shmups, but it can be really confusing for fighting games, especially if you have the traditional layout burned into your muscle memory. Aside from the layout, there are these switches that allow you to toggle the turbo mode, which repeatedly presses a button if you hold it down, or the auto fire mode, which repeatedly presses a button without you having to hold down the button. You can even control the rate of mashing with these sliding dials on top. Below the start and select buttons, there's also a slow button which repeatedly presses the pause button to produce a pseudo slow motion effect, and of course this also has its own dial to control the speed of slowness. The last thing on the controller is a ball top stick that uses rubber contacts. With any stick that uses rubber contacts instead of micro switches, it's harder to tell which direction is being read, especially the diagonals. With this combined with a weird button layout, you're bound to make mistakes when playing a fighting game. I do admit I really like the look of this thing. It takes inspiration from both the SNES and the Super Famicom. Everyone mentions the decorative purple blocks being the power and reset switches from the SNES, and the colors of the buttons being brought over from the Super Famicom controller, but there's a few more. From the SNES, the eject button inspired the depressed gray area in the middle, and the rounded cartridge slot turned into this rounded bump above the main body of the controller. From the Super Famicom, the power, reset, and eject buttons became the select, start, and slow buttons respectively. It has a lot of cool details, but it doesn't make up for how terrible it feels to actually use it with games. I thought this controller would at least be decent because of how popular it is, but popular doesn't always mean better. It's quite the opposite with this controller, actually. So in summary, if you use the super advantage, your opponent is going to have the super advantage. Here's an arcade stick that has a similar lever and button colors as the super advantage, but it fixes the problem with the button arrangement. It's made by Alston and it's called the super... <coughs> Or it was also called the Eliminator. The buttons on this controller are arranged in a way that actually makes sense, resembling the Street Fighter 2 rectangular layout. However, it's rotated to preserve the diamond shape of the face buttons. I thought this would make it awkward to use, but when you use this controller on your lap and not on a tabletop, your hands naturally want to come in at an angle, so I actually really like this decision. What I don't like is the lever. Again, rubber membranes. One notable thing about it though is that they give you a stick extender for when you need your stick to be just a little bit longer to feel nice in your hand. Moving on, this one also has a turbo setting. He's button mashing at an incredible speed! And a slow button, of course, a staple for these third party controllers. Something that's interesting about the overall look of the controller is the buttons and stick being contained in this box. I tried to take it out, but it looks like they super glued it in place. Looks pretty cool though, and the design is very human. The giant base has enough room for your entire hands to rest on and makes it really comfortable, which is something the Super Advantage can't say. It helps make the controller feel more stable and like it won't fall out of your lap when the games get intense. Between the Super Jojo and the Super Advantage, I had to say I like this one a lot more. Even though they both have similar levers, the button arrangement on this one actually makes sense. So between those two, I'd definitely recommend this one. <laughs> no. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. A lot of modern fighting games let you record and play back movements for training dummies. However, older games didn't have this feature and you either had to ask a friend or a sibling to play against you if you wanted to practice. 
But with the SN Programmable Digital Action Learning System from QJ, you can bring this feature to the SNES with its programmable macros. Yeah, this controller lets you use macro inputs, and it even has a little built-in screen to let you see what inputs are being registered. Again, very similar to the training mode in modern fighting games. For those of you who don't know, macros are a series of inputs that can be played back with the press of a single button. This means a macro can do something as simple as doing a dragon punch for you or an entire combo, and this controller does indeed have macros for specials and combos for both Street Fighter 2 and Fatal Fury. It's kind of like how the 3DS port of Street Fighter 4 lets you use specials with the buttons on the touchscreen. You can even hold down the macro buttons to rapid fire the specials. But what if you're on the other side of the stage? The macros assume you're on the player 1 side for all the specials, which means the motion inputs are going to be reversed if you're on the player 2 side. Well, if you hold left on the stick as you press the macro buttons, it'll automatically flip the left and right inputs. That's pretty cool, but what about characters like Guile with charge moves? You have to hold back to throw sonic booms. Worry not, because the macros also take that into account, and they can even hold directions for you. It's not perfect though, because I'd have times when the characters do a regular punch instead of throwing a sonic boom. With motion inputs though, it's PERFECT! Besides the macros, there are some other things that this stick has going for it. Namely, the stick. It's a ball top stick with a square gate, and it uses micro switches for the inputs. Listen to it, it sounds amazing. If you've never played on an arcade stick that uses switches, you might think I'm overreacting, but go try it yourself. It makes a huge difference. And here's a clip from a previous video that explains what a square gate means. If you don't know what a controller gate is, it's the shape of the housing that confines the control stick. As an example, the PlayStation controller has a circular gate, and the GameCube controller has an octagonal gate. But while the stick itself is fantastic, I don't like how the dust washer sticks into your hand. It's all because of this platform under it that raises it up and it doesn't feel comfortable to use. The buttons aren't too great either. The face buttons are way too small for you to comfortably use like a regular fight stick. Not to mention, where are the L and R buttons? Is it these? Or is it these on the side? The answer is yes, they all are. These are the L buttons, and these are the R buttons. I have no idea why they decided to go with this sort of design. If you want to use your strong attacks, your hand has to go on a mile long pilgrimage. Although there are some negatives about using this controller, the record and playback functions are still really cool. You can use it as a pseudo training mode if you want to practice countering combos, or for newer players who don't know how to activate specials yet. Of course, the best option would be for them to learn how to perform the specials themselves, but it's a good option to remove that barrier of entry. It's a good thing this was never a thing in the arcades though. I mean, people got into fights for throwing in Street Fighter 2. Could you imagine what would have happened if they had access to on-demand specials? The next fight stick doesn't have a special gimmick. It actually looks relatively normal compared to the other sticks I talked about so far. This is the SciTech Mega Master 1. This stick also uses a ball top with a square gate, but something that really threw me off was the spring. My god are they stiff. I swear if you use this stick for 30 minutes, your hands are gonna get jacked. And like the stick, the buttons use stiff springs too. I don't think I've ever heard a button spring back up so hard that it makes a controller echo. Another thing weird about these buttons is that they use tactile switches. This is the only arcade stick I know that uses those. Usually they use micro switches like on hat buttons or linear switches like on Sanwa buttons. The reason using tactile switches is so bad is because it creates an inconsistent amount of pressure that's needed to press the buttons. It's the same reason blue keyboard switches aren't popular. Having that inconsistent pressure means there's a higher chance of missing inputs. I also don't like how far apart the buttons are. I have to spread my fingers apart almost an uncomfortable amount to reach all the top buttons. But maybe that's just a me problem. As for the start and select buttons, they're on the left side of the controller, and of course, this controller also includes a turbo and a slow function. I thought this would be my favorite out of the sticks I talked about so far because the buttons have a layout that actually makes sense and the stick uses micro switches, but there's just too many things off about it. The springs in the stick and the buttons are too stiff, the tactile switches in the buttons are too weird, and the buttons are placed too far apart for your hands to comfortably use them. It's just a bunch of small things that add up to make the stick kind of mediocre. The Capcom Fighter Power Stick was made by Capcom themselves specifically for Street Fighter 2, and it really shows that this was made by a company that actually knew fighting games. The buttons are laid out to resemble Japanese style configurations to be more ergonomic instead of them being arranged in a grid. The buttons themselves also feel excellent and feel much more similar to modern Sanwa style buttons. If you're into keyboards, they use linear switches to give you an idea of how it feels. One thing that's a bit odd about the buttons is the arrangement. I assumed that the buttons would be arranged with the top row having the Y, X, and L buttons, and the bottom row having the B, A, and R buttons in that order to match the traditional Street Fighter light, medium, and strong punches and kicks. But no, the shoulder buttons sit on either side of the X button with the Y, B, and A buttons on the bottom row. It's kind of weird because the default controls on Street Fighter 2 assume the same thing I did, so you have to go to the options and change the settings. 
This was the same on the SciTech, but this controller is made by Capcom themselves, so I don't know what they were thinking. This controller has the turbo settings, but no slow-mo. Instead, it has a switch you can use to change to either a 4-direction mode that'll only read the cardinal inputs if you're playing something like Pac-Man or Frogger, or an 8-direction mode that'll also read the diagonal inputs for beat-em-ups, shmups, and fighting games and stuff like that. And speaking of directional inputs, the stick. It uses micro switches. And not just that, it uses actual arcade quality parts. I opened it up, and the stick uses Omron mechanical switches that's used on modern Sonwa sticks. With a micro switch lever, ball top stick, square gate, and Sunwa style buttons, it's pretty crazy how similar this feels to modern Japanese style fight sticks. And the way the controller splits down the middle and each side is angled makes it really comfortable for your hands to rest on it. This is definitely the best stick so far, and it's a lot of fun to use. People even customize it and drop in custom switches and buttons. I think that's so cool because customization is a really big part of modern fight stick culture and this is one of the few sticks from back then that let you do that. I can only think of one other type of SNES fight stick that's even better. The last stick I want to review is the CNL Championship Joystick. It uses parts from HAP which are the same ones used on American Street Fighter 2 machines. I'm really excited to review it because I definitely have it. Oh, uh... Yeah, I, I don't actually have it. It was too expensive for me and I just couldn't justify buying it. So why don't we build one instead? Yep, we're gonna build one using HAP style arcade parts and pad hacking a Super Nintendo controller. Pad hacking is a technique of soldering new components like buttons and sticks onto an existing controller PCB. I built the case out of wood and created the cover art based on the Street Fighter 2 control panel overlay and printed it out. I'll have the file for the overlay in the description. Right now, its dimensions are 12 inches by 8 inches, but you can resize the canvas to any dimension you want and move around all the graphics on top to accommodate whatever layout you desire. Cover that up with a thin sheet of polycarbonate, install all the buttons in the stick, and you're done. Let's try this out. This isn't the first pad hack I've done, so I'm pretty confident it'll work, but the question is if it'll work well. On my main fight stick, I use the linear switch Sanwa style buttons, and these hat buttons are clicky. I don't play Marvel and I grew up with the Japanese style buttons, so I don't have much experience with these clicky buttons, but they're really fun to use. As for the stick, I prefer ball top arcade sticks for other games, but this is how Street Fighter 2 felt to play in America, with hat style sticks and buttons, so knowing this is how the original arcade version felt to play, it feels really cool. So how much did it cost to make this? The stick and the buttons were about $45, and I just used some scrap materials for everything else, but you can honestly use whatever you want for the case. I've seen people use Tupperware, a body pillow, and a bunch of twigs put together with screws and rubber bands. And yes, the buttons are Pokemon cards. So it seems like most SNES fight sticks made by bigger companies were just cashing in on the hype and didn't really care about making anything competitively viable. I would say just get a Capcom fighter power stick, or even better, make one yourself. It's a really fun and educational experience, and it reflects what most fighting game pros had to do back in the day. Most competitive fight sticks were actually made by smaller groups of creators. The aforementioned CNL Championship joystick was originally made by just one man named Lee Bender, and the MOS sticks that helped shape the fighting game community during its infancy and set the standard for high quality fight sticks were built by just two individuals, Tao Nguyen and Reynaldo Nguyen. Even when big companies like Mad Cats eventually released a TE1, the parts were easily swappable and many people customized them. Whether you want a fight stick with just cool artwork, custom swap parts, or entirely built by you, you can tailor them exactly to your liking and that's what I love about Fight6 and its community. Fight6 are more than just controllers, they're unique canvases for fighting game players to express themselves and produce hilarious shitposts or genuinely amazing works of art. If there's one thing I hope you can take away from this video, it's that fighting games and fight sticks are pretty damn cool. Hi, thank you so much for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you had a happy holiday season and a good start to 2024. Uh, if you're interested in pad hacking or making your own video game controller, I'd recommend looking into it or any other, other numerous ways you can make your own controller. Uh, it's really fun and really rewarding. Uh, and it's relatively easy too. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff at all, highly recommended. I'm just a beginner. Um, but if you have any questions, I'll, I'll try my best to answer them. My next video was probably going to be on this monkey ball stick that I made. Um, this is sort of like a replica of the, the original Monkey Ball Arcade um, control scheme with like the banana shaped jo uh, analog joystick and stuff like that. Uh, I was debating whether I wanted to upload a companion video to this one showing the build process for the Street Fighter 2 stick or just wait until I made the Monkey Ball video to, sh to talk about the uh, building process. I feel like if I upload both, it'd be kind of redundant because they'd cover the same exact topic. So I decided to just wait until the Monkey Ball video unless I get requests to upload the Street Fighter one as well. Um, so just, yeah, let me know.
Uh, I would also definitely recommend checking out other people's fight sticks on like Reddit or, or something like that or whatever forum or Twitter you use. Um, not just for inspiration for building your own fight stick, but also just because like, you know, they're, they're really cool. Like, like I showed off a, l a little bit in the video, they're really cool and um, people get really creative and funny with the with some of their with some of their fight sticks. But yeah, anyways, um, thank you again for watching. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you'll see me again. Bye.